Aren't you curious why some people do really well cold calling and working the phones to generate roofing leads? Why some people just flop and fail over and over again? Well, that curiosity that you have is actually the reason that many people have success cold calling. And that's exactly what I'm going to be covering today in this video is to teach you how to play into the human desire, the irresistible pull of curiosity to need to know what's happening, who's reaching out, what's going on. Because by understanding how we think as humans and how curiosity literally takes a stronghold of us and has us do crazy things, you can then start to play into this to start better conversations. And no, this is not manipulation. This is not BS. This is a tool to use to help you interpersonally with relationships, with understanding why we do what we do. And by applying what you learn here, this profoundly simple approach to working phones, cold calling, you are going to say, oh my gosh, that was the simplest thing. You're going to be able to start using it right now. I promise you this is what's going to happen. Number one, you're going to know exactly what type of curiosity is going to drive your customers to respond both on cold calls and how you can apply that in direct mail and more. Number two, you will have a higher contact rate, meaning the people you call, you will get in touch with more of them. Number three, you're going to start easier conversations. And number four, you will end up with more either sales appointments, fresh sales appointments, or on the phone with customer, excuse me, prospects that you didn't sell on the follow-up. So those are the four things you're going to get from applying what you're about to learn right here. And you're going to be able to start using it right away. All right. Now, if you're new here, my name is Adam Benzman, The Roof Strategist, and everything I do here in these videos and on the podcast is designed to help you develop personal sales strategies to smash your income goals. And to do that, it's leveling up your sales skills, leveling up your interpersonal skills, understanding communication and fundamentals of how we're wired as humans, and figuring out ways to start easier conversations and then close those deals. So hit the bell, subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Now, before we jump into the details of this curiosity thing, I am going to be leaving you in this episode's FAR snapshot, the fast action result snapshot that comes to your inbox exclusively. Inside there will be a few resources to help you get these phone numbers to start dialing. So check that out. And if you're not already getting it, click the link for the video description. It's that little triangle on mobile and you can sign up to start receiving the FAR snapshot for every episode exclusively sent to your inbox. So curiosity, let's talk about this. Remember the last time you were watching a TV drama, really crappy show. And then all of a sudden the main actor is backed up to the cliff. He looks over, there's no escape. There's a guy with a gun to his head and he's looking there and then cut commercial break. And then you're sitting there through these commercials, watching all these TV ads about pharmaceuticals for drugs and diseases you never knew existed. And now you're back. You've burned another seven minutes of your time because you got to know what's going to happen to the guy on the cliff because there's no way out. And how is he going to survive? And we can't help but know it. But guess what happens when we come back from commercial break? What do we do? We are back in a scene and a husband and wife and they're fighting and they're arguing about something else and they're four states over. But somehow it's side of the story of the guy on the cliff and we need to know what's going to happen. So we watch through that and then bam, we're in another set of commercials and we can't pull ourselves away even though this TV show sucks. This is the power of human curiosity. It literally pulls us to do things that we consciously don't even want to do. When was the last time you sat through a crappy movie just to find out what happens at the end? This is curiosity. This, by the way, has driven a lot of the testing and fundamentals that are inside my battle pack. Let's talk direct mail, for example. My direct mail letters help you get leads. Why? Number one, they get opened. Why do they get opened? Because I teach you hand address, hand stab, crooked stamp, no name on the return address. So when someone sees it, what's the question? Put yourself in your shoes. You get the letter. You're like, I'm really curious. Who's this from? It's hand addressed. They must have taken time. So what do you do? You open it because you're curious. Then goal number two, get them to read the letter. Well, the reason I do plain paper and people push back and I'm like, it's going to work better. Trust me. When you use plain paper, you don't have logos all over it. People are curious who sent this to me. Now, if they see a big, you know, so-and-so roofing company up top, first thing, open the letter, ah, solicitation, roofing company, trash. But if they are curious, the headline says something to the tune of, I just drove by your house and noticed this and wanted to bring it to your attention. I am even more curious who drove by my house. What are they bringing to my attention? I'm going to read it or at least skim it. And that's why those letters work. They play into this curiosity, this irresistible pull that gets the reader to open, to read, to engage, to find out. We're planting seeds of questions in their mind. They 
got to know who it is. That is why curiosity is so powerful. So when we understand how people operate, we can repackage our sales approach and our conversation starters to appeal to this. So how does this bring this back to you with cold calling? Here it is. It's very simple. Now, with cold calling, this applies to kind of two different camps of cold calling. Camp number one is following up with old leads that you didn't close. Oftentimes, we get stuck in the voicemail loop. You call, you get the voicemail, and you text, and then nothing happens. By the way, the same thing happened to me. I called an old customer. He flew with six people on his team out to Colorado to meet with me, and he screened my call because I wasn't saved in his contacts. And, he's, and then he texts me. He goes, oh, Adam, sorry about that, man. I'll give you a buzz back. I've been bombarded with telemarketers lately. So this is people's like resistance to the phone these days. So we have to break through that using curiosity. How do we do that, right? So this is the first application, is all the open leads for example that we didn't sell. Option two is generating new business. This is cold calling to start conversations. Now, my personal belief on cold calling is that the better the list, meaning the more targeted it is, the better it's gonna work. Same thing with the direct mail. Now, I'm not gonna waste my time dialing through rental properties and homes that have been done because I'm wasting my time. So if I take a little bit more time in planning and preparation, as Brian Tracy says, every one minute planning saves 10 minutes in execution. So let's say the addresses I'm writing down to use my my targeted or under the radar sales letter approach, I can then reference those addresses and call as well. And I can layer on that additional touch point, stop by, leave the letter, send a letter in the mail, call that homeowner, stop by again. So now you're, you're kind of hitting them from all these angles, but you know it's the right address. So as you go through that, by the way, you can check out that far snapshot for some resources to get those uh, addresses, excuse me, get the phone numbers of the right addresses to be targeting. So what do we do? How do we use curiosity? What's this big unveil, Adam? You're gonna laugh at this because it's how simple. You call twice. Yeah, I said it right. You call once, then you don't leave a voicemail. And then what do you do? You call back again. And then if they don't answer, you leave a voicemail. But by doing this, I want you to think about it, for example. Imagine you're sitting in your truck, you're driving to an appointment, you see a call come up, and you're running late. You're like, ah, I don't wanna get on the phone because I have to be at this customer. So you let it go to voicemail. But then they call back again. And now what's going through your head? Is this an emergency? Who's calling? What do they need? Now I'm curious. I am curious beyond all get out. And even though just seconds ago I denied that call, I swiped to ignore because I didn't have time. Now I'm gonna pick up because I gotta know what's going on. And your homeowners, your homeowners are doing the same thing because their curiosity will take control of them and get them to answer even at times they can't or shouldn't be. So by doing this, as I mentioned, you are going to increase your touch rate, your conversations that you start. No, 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 hold on, hold on. I'm gonna guess that you're thinking this. Adam, that doesn't feel right. That feels a little sleazy. Adam, how do I deal with this approach if they say, why did you call me twice? So there's a few answers that I have for you. Option one, think of this, which this is an answer or in response to, I don't feel right doing this. How do you approach the pushback of calling twice? I drive out to the perfect neighborhood. I'm out there, my time's valuable. I knock a door, I go tick, 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 and there's no answer. Do I leave? No, I'm gonna knock one more time. I'm gonna ring the bell again. I am going to have two attempts before I leave. You don't just show up and go, no, no, and then leave. You show up with a very unique rap. Da, 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 da. That's how I used to knock the door. They'd be really curious. Curiosity is so powerful. Versus ding dong, that's anyone. It's the delivery guy. I can get that later. But if I do a little unique knock pattern, they're going to be curious to answer the door. And if they don't answer, I might do it again. And then I'll leave. So that's option one. Option two is this. If you don't like this approach, don't use it. You don't have to use everything you learn. I encourage you to use it, it can only help. It's a phone call, it's not that big a deal. You're not like kicking the door down while they're trying to get the kid to sleep, right? It's a simple phone call. Now, what do you do if they say, why did you call me twice? I wanna give you a few very real options in here. Let me, let me get this out of the way. In sales, don't blow smoke. Customers know when you're blowing smoke, okay? So have a plan that is legitimate, that you can stand behind and be honest. You don't want to make some BS, oh, you know, oh, sorry, the, the call dropped there and I'm calling you back. No, the call didn't drop. You were doing what you were doing, but you can state something serious. So here's a few options. Number one, this is my favorite one, by the way. It's easy. Hey, why'd you call? Oh, oh, hey, sorry about that. That's it. Sorry about that. 
You're on the phone. They're going to forget. They're going to want to know why you called, so they're going to skip over it. They're not going to dive in deeper and say, hey, you called me twice, and I didn't uh, get the answer. Why you called me twice? No, they don't do that. They're just going to simply say, oh, okay, and they'll, well, what, do you, what is it? And then now you go into your deal, and you start the conversation, so who cares? Sorry about that. It's really easy and simple. Option two is also incredibly simple. Hey, sorry about that. I uh, forgot to leave you a voicemail or I had an issue leaving you a voicemail, whatever it is. If you had an issue, say it, or simply, I forgot. That's on you. Remember, I even taught this in the, the, the uh, overcoming objections if they have to think about it. You put it on you. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I must not have left you with enough information, right? So w what is it that you have to think about? I wanna leave you with as much as you need. So same thing. Oh, you know, I'm sorry about that. I forgot to leave you a voicemail. I was just calling back to, to, to leave you a voicemail, but I'm glad I got you on the phone. So it's that simple. So here's how it works. This, fundamentally simple approach needed the right framework for you to see the lens of how curiosity pulls us so you can start using this right away, all right? So by doing this, you call once, do not leave a voicemail, do not text. Call back again. I Watch, I wa mark my words. I bet you half of those exciting calls are gonna get answered, or a large percentage of them. And then you're gonna start those conversations. You can use the sample call script, because you can when you're on the phone, you're looking down, right? Make sure it's natural, you know, it's not like a robot. But there's a sample call, cold call script in the battle pack, along with the slap formula, which the slap formula I prefer from an application standpoint, but to get your feet wet, definitely check out that script, all right? Now, don't be afraid to use this in conjunction with your multi-touch marketing approach by leaving that letter at the door if no one's home, sending the letter in the mail, the slap formula to show back up. Hey, the reason I'm stopping by is to ask, you know, what questions you had about that letter I sent you in the mail, okay? There's your approach. You're calling, same script, same approach. Now, boom, boom, boom. That one house that you canvas to, you can hit four separate times. Letter at the door, letter in the mail, cold call, show back up. You've hit them four times. They're gonna know who you are. Then they're gonna be seeing you in that neighborhood because you're doing the same thing for all those homeowners. So remember to integrate this into your complete strategy as a key element to help you start more conversations, get back in touch with past customers, and make more sales. Pretty simple, isn't it? And it all plays on this irresistible pull that we have as humans to be very curious about what's coming next. So that's all for this video, and you can start using this right now to start easier conversations. Check the FAR snapshot that I sent to your inbox for some recommended resources to help you get this data for cold calling. Now, as always, I don't endorse any of these things. It's up to you to vet them. Go do your homework, find what matches your budget, who you feel comfortable working with, and what type of platform is gonna integrate best with how you are running your business or your company's running your business, okay? So go put this to you. And remember, curiosity is a powerful pull that we can use in our favor to start better conversations with our customer. Now hop to it, and if you want even more, click here for a video on cold calling for commercial deals, and click here for a free copy of my Pitch Like a Pro roofing sales training video library. We'll see you in the next one.